Hey everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thank you all so much for joining me for floss tube number 12. Um, and this may be the 12th time I've started this video, maybe more like the ninth time. Um, but my dog was like sitting here crying at me for not cuddling him enough. And so I had to keep restarting because I would like lean over and cuddle with him and then it wasn't good enough. And then finally he left in disgust. And so I started recording, but then he came back. <laughs> Ah, anyway, it's cursed. It's the All Hallows Eve Eve floss tube curse. Anyway, it's floss tube number 12. And um, the number 12 is um, not significant to me, but in my brain it's significant because um, I'm a medieval historian and medieval people were really into numerology. And 12 was an incredibly important number for them. Um, not just because of like the 12 apostles, but also because of the multiplication part of numerology. So four represented the earth and the terrestrial realm where you have four winds and four directions and the human body has four humors. And then the three is the trinity and the divine. And when you multiply those together, you get 12, which represents basically the entire universe. So 12 is significant. And this is my 12th floss tube. So I feel like it should be significant, although it may just be cursed. We will find out. Anyway, enough about that. Welcome to my new subscribers. I have some new subscribers this week. I'm happy to have you um, joining me and welcome back to all my folks who hang out with me every week. It's great to spend some time with you. This is a channel about embroidery and other handcrafts, textile crafts in particular and baking and history and the history of those things, baking and textile crafts and embroidery. And so if that is something that seems interesting to you and you're not subscribed, I would love to have you subscribed and be a part of my stitchy community. Today's video is so exciting because I have seven finishes, seven. Who am I? Who, who is this person? I feel like a, like a, like, like I've been possessed. Ooh, spooky. Uh, seven finishes. One of them is an FFO. One of them is fully finished and I started it this week. So start to fully finished in a week plus finishing six other things. Okay. In all reality, three of those things are my stitch tober, but four of those things are like full size projects. I look forward to showing you those. So I will show you my finishes. I will show you the only whip that I have left. I will talk about my plans for the week, which are kind of fun um, because I only have one whip, so I get to like start things. I have a haul, which is larger than I had anticipated. And finally, I will announce the winners of my 200 subscribers giveaway. So that'll be at the end. Before I get into all that though, I do want to thank you all for giving me your opinions on my font for my logo. Your ideas really kind of helped me distill what I was thinking with that. And like I said, this wasn't like a contest where like we voted on it and I chose one, but what I find is that when I hear other people's thoughts, it kind of solidifies what I want to do with my whatever I'm doing. And so seeing all your comments really, really helped me. I have decided to go for the more mod font, this font here. And I picked that because of what I want to do with it. I want to do each letter in a different stitch. And I feel like the old timey one, while I really like that font actually a lot, and I might start using that for other things, I, I wouldn't have it. It wouldn't be as versatile, right? For the different stitches. So um, I'm going to use this font and I'm going to do a different stitch for each letter. If I hate it, I can just cut it out and do it again. I mean, it's not like, it's not like it's permanent. It's not like it's made out of diamonds, right? It's just floss that I can cut out and redo. So um, thanks again for that. I appreciate all of your input on that. I also real quick want to give a shout out to two floss tube channels that have really helped me keep my spirits up this week. I've had kind of a difficult week. And to give you an example of my week, I'm pretty sure that my car, this is just like the end of my week. I'm pretty sure that my car is full of spiders because of our weekly hurricanes, right? That's like the most 2020 sentence I feel like anyone can say. My car is full of spiders because we're having weekly hurricanes. <laughs> 
So I've been watching a lot of calming and like uplifting floss tubes. And so I wanted to share the two main calming and uplifting floss tubes that I have been watching this week, week, last week and a half. First, Pam from Stitching in the Land of Good Enough is fantastic. And her floss tube channel, Stitching in the Land of Good Enough, kind of exemplifies what I think a lot of us are feeling. Like we just, it's good enough right? It, it, we put our work into it and it's good enough, but she is so lovely and joyful. And she has been, um, this past couple, two weeks, week and a half or so has been opening a daily lead up to Halloween gift. And that has just been so lovely every morning. Well, whenever she posts, I'll watch that. So Pam, thank you for being just lovely. It's really helped me. You've really helped me. You've made me forget about the spiders for like six minutes a day. And the second, uh, the second floss tube channel that I've been watching, and I'm watching a lot of back um, episodes because she has like tons of videos, is Lisa from Lisa Abby's Needlework. And she is, we have very different styles, but she's just so kind. I don't know. She's soothing. I feel like she would find that funny that I think that like she's soothing to me. Yeah. She's also really helped kind of make me feel less concerned about the hurricane that's actually now coming from the Gulf, from the Caribbean towards us again. So thank you, Pam and Lisa, for being kind of fantastic. And I'll put links to their channels below. I highly recommend them if you want just some fun, uplifting, stitchy conversation. We'll just say that. Anywho, let's get to the stitching. We're going to start with finishes. So I have a pile of finishes right here. So my first finished object is fully finished and I'm going to shift a little bit because I, <laughs> last week I had my camera on the other side of the phone. Like I flipped my phone around. So I'm going to scoot this way. Um, so here is my fully finished object. My friend just passed her PhD comprehensive exams. So she got married on Labor Day. And then she finished her comprehensive exams. She's going to get her PhD soon. And so this is basically a needle minder. So when she gets her PhD, she can move this down and hang it on her wall. So I made this for her this week. So um, I really like that. I'm going to wrap this up and give this to her. I don't know, probably this weekend. I love it. Um, and it's fully finished on the back. And um, if you want to know how I finish my hoops, I'll put a link to that over here. I remembered that it goes above my sewing machine. So over here, I will put a link to that. And this is finish number one and my fully finished object. Isn't that beautiful? I'm really proud of this actually. That's number one. Number two, I finished Penguin and Fish, Your Sweet, which was the embroidery of the month from, I don't know, three or four months ago, but it is silk shaded. It's my first practice with silk shading and it was really fun and it's kind of given me a lot of confidence to try silk shading for other things as well. So that's number two. Number three is the embroidery of the month from this month from Penguin and Fish, which is still available until tomorrow. And it is the Bride of Frankenstein's bouquet. And I changed it a little bit. I made the leaves a light green color instead of a dark gray, which was what they were originally supposed to be. But And I made the spider silver instead of that dark gray. And I changed a couple stitches. So anyway, that's finish number three finish four five and six are from my stitch tober and so I th i'm oh i'm super far behind right so i only have three of these and i should have done like nine i'm gonna be working on these through the next probably two weeks but i think this is day 20. i'll put the picture up here so you can see the the whole prompt and the three that I'm going to show you are Ritual, Enchanted, and Heart. So I think it's 20 through 22, I think. Ritual, I did 
speaking of divine numbers, I did a representation of uh, the Eucharist. That's ritual. For Enchanted, I did the glass covered rose from Beauty and the Beast. And then for Heart, I did a classic mom tattoo. So those are finishes four, five, and six. And now number seven, I finished my dance macabre. How great does that look? This was a beast and my goal was to finish it by Halloween. And I did. I'm going to get you really close and you can see all the stitches. And I'm really, really pleased with this. I'm trying to find like the perfect frame and I have not found it yet. So I'm going to keep looking. This probably won't go up by tomorrow because I won't find the perfect frame, but I'm on the lookout for the perfect frame for this. Like I can't decide if I want something like black and ornate and like vintage or more simple or gold and ornate and vintage. Like I kind of, in my mind, I'm, I'm envisioning the kind of frames my grandmother had in her old house in Philadelphia in like the seventies in eighties. That's kind of what I'm envisioning. Unfortunately, I'm not willing to go through thrift stores right now. And we don't have very good thrift stores here anyway. So this will have to wait, but it's finished. And I'm so pleased. So those are my seven finishes, which by the way, is also numerologically speaking, a very lucky number in all sorts of different cultures. And those are my finishes. So that's really exciting. I have so many finishes. I only have one whip. My only whip is Hildegard is Hildegard of Bingen's Cosmic Egg. And what I've been working on are these green silk shaded clouds here that go around the outside. And I think I have like four more to do. One, two, three, f three more to do. Ooh, nice. I only have three more of those to do. And then I'll be done with those. And then I'm gonna work on these winds here. And then I'll work on the firmament and the, and, and the, um, the sky. Uh, this is Hildegard of Bingen's Cosmic Egg. And if you are interested in learning more about this piece and about Hildegard, um, I did a video on Hildegard of Bingen and her cosmic egg in particular, this image in particular, which I'll put right here. And that is, was in a video in Tuesday's video, which I will put a link to up here above my sewing machine. So that is my only whip. Oh, and I guess I never talk about what, what things are done on. Hildegard is done on a natural linen from uh, just linen yardage from Fat Quarter Shop. Dance Macabre, and she's in all sorts of different flosses. Dance Macabre is done one strand in Weeks Dye Works Onyx. And this took about a skein and a quarter of Weeks Dye Works one strand. So this was like a lot of stitches and it is stitched on a linen yardage again from Fat Quarter Shop and ivory that I coffee dyed um, so that it would be kind of mottled and, you know, spooky. The other stuff is just kind of, on, oh, this is on um, a teal linen that I got as, uh, at Joann's and this is just DMC white, but this is actually um, dying for cross stitch Aztec, which it is so beautiful. The way it's variegated is um, it looks almost like gold, like it's shining. I mean, like obviously it's a gold color, but it looks like it's like reflective. So this is dying for cross stitch and it's called Aztec and I love it. So I'm really pleased with that. That's all my whips though. So let's talk about plans because I need plans because I have like no whips. Obviously my plan is to continue working on Hildegard and I want to sketch out and plan out my logo. I don't know where my logo is right now to show you, but uh, I will put a picture of it right here. I was just gonna say Christie's Corner in a 
in that font that I showed you and it will be all different stitches. And I think it's gonna, oh, and it's gonna be in teal because we voted on that. We voted for teal. I do want to start my, I mentioned last week that I got some black work patterns and I wanna start one of them, a simple one. And so I'm going to show you over here the pattern is just going to be a small flower pattern. And this is from the steady thread and I'll put the link below. This is a free pattern um, that I downloaded from them and I'm just doing it. This is my first time doing a counted stitch at all. So we'll see how it goes, but I've gridded it out on white 14 count Ada that I got from like Joanne. So if I hate it, it hasn't cost me much money. So I'm gonna start on this this week and I'm gonna do it in a variegated floss because I have like some beautiful variegated flosses back there that with the kind of stitching I do, I never get to use. And so I can use it for stuff like this. If I like doing black work, I actually have other patterns I can do. Some are more complicated and this is like the least complicated pattern. And that may be a new direction that I can go into over break because I have this long winter break between my semesters. I might want to start my needle fel a needle felting project. I have two more needle felting kits that I bought when I bought my sunset, my mountain sunset one that I completed before. And I'm kind of feeling like I want to, I don't know, stab something thousands of times. So I, I may start the Scandinavian deer that I got from the woolery.com. I'll put a link to this down below as well. It feels like kind of Christmassy to me and I don't know, it's different from what I had been doing. And I don't think there's a lot of planning involved or like, I don't have to make decisions. I can just follow the pattern and I might, I might like that. So I might do this this week. And I got my pieces back from the threads exhibit um, at my local art gallery that I had a couple pieces in and I'm feeling kind of inspired to do another landscape or to sketch out a landscape and start a landscape. It's been a while since I've done one. I just haven't been feeling very creative this semester. It's just, it's just been a difficult time, right? And so I think I kind of want to start a new landscape. I'm feeling like it's time to start a new landscape. There was a virtual reception last Sunday that I mentioned that we'll just say that it didn't go well. I was fine. Like nothing bad happened for me, but the person who was running it made some poor choices for a virtual exhibit or a virtual reception. And there were a lot of technical difficulties. So I'll leave it at that. I think everyone meant well and everyone did their best, but it did not go well, I think. So if you want to see the exhibit, I'll post a link right here. It has all kinds of different textile processes and um, art forms. It has embroidery and cross stitch, black work, weaving, felting, quilting, applique, um, basketry. I mean, it was just so, just, it was just so good. So um, watch that video if you're interested in seeing all sorts of different textile arts. It's a, it's a great exhibit and I'm pretty pleased with the video I made. So check that out. All right, let's talk about haul. I have more haul than I anticipated. I forgot about a floss that I got last week and then I got more floss for like monthly subscriptions. And then I got a couple orders in today that I was expecting tomorrow. So anyway, um, I'm going to show you my, the haul that I got. So let's start with floss. I got my color and cotton floss of the month. Um, and this is one I got last week that I forgot to show you. I got, this one is like a, there we go, old brick, barn wood, and old moss. So that's from Color and Cotton. I got an order from Dying for Cross Stitch. I got two silks and two cottons. The first cotton is called rock bottom. I think I need to not buy any more grays. I think I have a lot of grays, but this is just really lovely. So I'm glad I got it. Rock bottom. And the other cotton is called Americana, uh, which is showing up more teal. 
than it is in real life. That's called Americana. And then the two silks I have are Salty Dog, which is a lovely rich navy. And Schoolhouse, which is a rust and it's showing up more orange for you than it was for me in real life. I got my Be Stitch Me Silk of the Month. And this one is called Evil Queen. Cauldron. Poison. Tombstone. and all lit up. Those are my floss subscriptions and then my dying for cross stitch order. And then I and then I placed an order with one, two, three stitch. This is my first order with one, two, three stitch and it came very quickly. I was very impressed actually. And I ordered a couple things. I ordered some, the Gentle Art Wool in Mulberry and Midnight. I want to start find I want to find a wool that I like because I want to do more Bayou tapestry reproductions, but I want to do it in wool because that's what they would have used. And I eventually want to start dyeing my own wool using natural dyes, but I think that's going to have to wait maybe until the summer. I just don't know that I'm going to have time over break. I'm things keep kind of piling on me both craft wise, but also work wise. Like I have a lot of deadlines either during break or right after break that need to get that need to be met. It's actually critical to my career <laughs> that they get met. So I'm trying to see if like, I'm basically I'm, I'm testing out wools. So if you have any wools you really like, I know I mentioned this before and I got some good advice, but if you have any wools you like for embroidery, please let me know. And then I got a bunch of different kinds of needles. So I got John James needles, Bowen needles, and tulip needles. And I think I want to do a embroidery needle comparison video. I want to kind of test them out and see which one I like best or see the different qualities of these needles. So keep an eye out for that in the next couple weeks, maybe sometime in December probably. And I will do some testing, some needle testing, and I'll give ideas of the needles that I really like. So I have now four different brands of needles. And I just want to show you that I put needles in my needle book slash scissor case that I made. I want to make another one of these. That was fun putting them in there. I got more thread gloss from, let me see if I can get it. There we go. Wisecraft handmade in the two cents that were out of stock. So I got that. Also from one, two, three stitch, I got two um, half yards of fabric just, just for fun. So I got this one, which was something Magnolia and birds. And so it's white and sparkly. And then I got this really cute one. That's just teapots. And I think they're both adorable. So I got those just a half yard, just, just to play around with. And finally I got, I got an Amazon order and I bought a bunch of zippers and these are, I think 20, two or 24 inch zippers. I like really long zippers and that way I don't have to worry about them being too short. I'd rather cut them off. They're nylon so I can just cut them. And so that's my purchased haul. But if you remember last week, I was talking about the elderly woman across the street who is moving. And so she's been putting stuff out every once in a while. And I've just been going over to see what kind of craft things she has. And I found some really heavy duty snips which are awesome. I found a thimble and then a little crochet hook and they were all together. So I just picked up all three of them. So that was um, something I got last week that I forgot to tell you about. So that's my haul. And I do want to add Pam from Stitching the Land of Good Enough taught me a new word this week. She taught me about orts. Apparently an ort is the floss scraps when you cut floss off. And she was talking about how she stores her orts. And so I thought I'd show you how I store my orts. And I store mine in this jar. This is all of my orts for, 
I don't know, the past 18 months, Thir 15 months, past 15 months. And what I think I'm going to do, well, my plan was to keep them and put them in a pin cushion. That's what I wanted to do. But then I saw somebody who put them in an ornament, like a glass ornament, and they saved them up for the whole year and they had an ornament for every year. And I think I'm going to do that. And so this will be like my 2020 ort ornament because I didn't make one for 2019. And then I'll just keep them in here and make an ornament every year and just put the date on it and it'll just help me remember my stitching for the year. So thanks Pam for teaching me a new word. And here are my orts. I feel like we should have a hashtag for that. Like show me, show me your ort hashtag ort show or something. I don't know. If someone has a better hashtag than that, then please tell me because I'm terrible at hashtags. Finally, the giveaway. Last week I passed 200 subscribers and I decided I would do a 200 subscriber giveaway because I had purchased two beginner dimensions embroidery kits. Um, cause folks had said that they were, that I was kind of inspiring them to start embroidery. And so I thought I would help that out. The kits include the printed fabric and it's a nice kind of thick fabric, white, white floss and a needle. I don't know if you can see that and a needle, a black plastic hoop and directions. And if you were interested, I asked you to put home in a comment because it says home sweet home on it. And the winners are Don Colbert or Colbert. Um, I'll write it down here and Lisa Marie, and I will comment on your comments but I wanted to, I'll do that tomorrow so that, you know, it'll give you time to watch the video and I don't know, be surprised and excited. I don't know. I'll comment on your comment tomorrow and make sure that you know that you won. Congratulations. And please contact me either via Instagram messenger, like Instagram private message. My Instagram is at Dr. Underscore Christy, um, or through email at Christie's cornercraft at gmail.com. And I'll put both of those contacts down below so you can access them easy and send me your mailing address. In addition to the kit, I'm going to include five yards of DMC white floss because the floss that comes with the kit is kind of junky. I have to be honest with you. And this is much better. And I have my, you know, my floss cone of doom. And so I figured I would share the wealth and give you some nice floss, some nice DMC floss um, on a thread drop that I made today, um, which is blue and polka dotty. I'll also give you a slightly larger needle since I have all these needles now. Um, I'll give you a number five DMC needle, which is slightly larger than the one that comes in the kit and it's probably of better quality. And then I'll also include a needle minder that I made of your choice. And so we can talk about that when you contact me and I can find out what kinds of things that you're interested in. Keep in mind that your kits will be opened because I will be putting extra stuff in them. And in fact, I'll probably just have to rebag them all because I don't think that the bags, when I open them, when I opened that bag, it kind of ripped it apart. So expect that it will be an opened kit because I added more stuff into it. And I also reuse packaging, like mailing packaging. So, so it'll be a bit disheveled. You'll get kind of a scruffy package in the mail from me because it will have already been used, but it'll be awesome. And recycle and reuse is kind of what I'm trying to do. So congratulations, Dawn and Lisa. And thank you everyone for watching and commenting. Um, and I kind of want to do a giveaway at 500. I mean, it'll be a while, so I have time to like collect things, but I'm starting to collect things for 500 just a heads up. So subscribe because 500 and it'll be really fun stuff. I think that's it for me. Thank you all so much for joining me today. And if you enjoyed hanging out, like I said, please subscribe. I'm collecting things for 500 subscribers and stick around because love having you here. I'm planning on this weekend filming a historical baking video rather than the tiny hat tutorial that I had mentioned last week. I realized that Tuesday is election day in the US. And one thing that 19th century women did was bake election cakes. And so Hannah Mary Bouvier Peterson, who is the author of the historical cookbook that I bake out of, has a recipe for an election cake. And 
I'm going to have a special guest who does, who like studies the history of like these cakes talk and I'm going to interview her for the video on Tuesday. I will do a tutorial for a um, tiny hat garland, I think on for November 10th. So it'll be like next weekend. Um, so, you know, stick around for that. It'll be awesome. They're so adorable, but I love, I love the tiny hats. I love the tiny hats. Anyway, with all that being said, have a safe Halloween. I hope that you have the Halloween that you want. I'll say that. I hope you have the Halloween that you want and be safe and please take care of yourselves and have a good one.